Hello, welcome to We're Calling, uh, and this is under debate and could be changed, but a portal to fantasy. I'm Owen and this is Abby. Say hello, Abby. Hello. Hello. Abby has a channel, <laughs> Naked History, which has a degree of history on it, but is mostly about books. And I'll put the link in yes. the description so you can go and check that out. Uh, I'm Owen. I mostly review books and I do some other stuff. Um, we are talking about fantasy, I guess, which is not a genre Abby is particularly familiar with. She's been getting into sci-fi in kind of a big way, reading several big sci-fi books in a row and uh, and enjoying them. But uh, we talked about this and she's saying she hadn't really read fantasy. So I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that and maybe talk about how to get her into it. Um, and you know, your ideas, will, additional ideas will be welcome in the comments. We'll start with this. Abby, why do you hate fantasy? Why did you tell me you hated it? Mm. Okay, I feel like hate was maybe a strong word to use, but um, I think I you like said as soon as I hear as soon as I hear there are dragons, as soon as I hear there are dragons, I refuse to pay any more attention was more or less a, a verbatim quote. Yes. Well, okay, let me go off the dragons then. So um Okay. Jim, the thanks. reason why I'm gonna say like I, I preemptively have decided that I hate it without ever really reading any proper fantasy, which is that that's yeah. the proper way to, to say yeah, what, how I what, feel about what have it. you read? You, you have said you've read some fantasy. What have you read? I mean I've read Alice in Wonderland, which I believe does count as fantasy. Yeah. Absolutely. Um I Harry Potter, that counts, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Yeah. A lot. Well, um, you, 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 you said that at one point in your life you only reread Jane Austen and Harry Potter on a loop. Yes, I did. Um, but I just found them like very like comforting books to read. I don't know if more like Harry Potter is more of like a nostalgia thing um, as opposed to anything else. I don't really know. I, I don't really know how I would feel about other magical things. So this is the thing. Harry Potter seems to be one of those books where I have just learn to accept the creatures and things in it. But I feel that I'm not sure how well I would connect to non-human characters or really like major plot points or development points that are based around non-human creatures. Mm. I'm worried that I wouldn't particularly find that very engaging or like feel that there's anything really at stake there that I'm interested in. That's like my first, I don't know if you want me to pause to let you no. reply was to that, that? Is that. I haven't heard your, I haven't like heard your reaction. You haven't, I guess you're going to record it soon to Children of June. But did you switch off at the end when there's like a giant worm man? <laughs> was that a problem for you? <laughs> um, I just like more didn't really understand what was happening yeah. from the district. And yeah. I found myself having to like reread bits over and over again. Yeah. And I really could not visualise what, was happening. There, maybe are, there are disturbing thought... pictures on the internet. I mean, search for it very specifically. Oh. I'd be very careful about your search terms. But like, there is, there are, there, <laughs> there is art of Lito the Second, which you can find. Um, I'm sure. Okay. But yeah, so, so maybe you're, you're, you're probably visualization. Yeah. So, but yeah, that so a problem might be that you find it hard not to have human protagonists doing kind of humany stuff. I guess is what you're saying. Do you find it easier to believe in technology right. then? In a sense, in like, a sense, as yeah. long as it's not too well described. And I think that this all ties into my real detestation for descriptive writing. I literally hate it with a passion. I, even Dickens, doesn't matter who does it, it doesn't matter how well it's done. My, I just don't have the attention span for it. My brain just switches off. And I think this is where I found the whole thing in Children of Dune really hard to deal with is because I'm really quick at visualizing things normally in books. Uh -huh. I just kind of like read it really briefly and then my mind just kind of creates this picture and it's not an issue. But then when I come across things where it's like really like detailed and then I have to keep adding to this picture in my mind mm. of what it looks like and adding in the detail. That's interesting. It's just like a really long process. Yeah. And I'm like, Look, yeah. if you just said like it was a field, I'd be happy. But then when you start describing yeah. what the field looks like, that's where I stumble. That's really interesting. Like almost a pro like almost the reverse of the I don't like watching the movies because it ruins my image in the book. Or it's like maybe a parallel where you just can't stand the author telling you what the things look like. You're like, right. this isn't your book. This is my book. I want to decide what it looks like. Even to the point of character descriptions, to be honest with you, I don't mind a little bit of description, particularly if it's one like really defining feature about a person. I find that can be yeah. quite useful. But when you're down to like describing like every single part of a person or like really, really detailed, 
I personally am not super into that because almost as soon as you tell me a name, then I will have just imagined something mm. myself. So everything that you add into that then is me having to go back and like correct the image that I've imagined. I don't know if you, that's you, like me. You or don't want to find out like 10 chapters in that your hero has one arm or something. Right. As yeah, example. I just, I'm... So you've got a I, bit or, 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 yeah. The only time I keep, really keep going, do like descriptive writing is normally in like um, historic fiction, not historical fiction, but mm. historic fiction, when I just, as a historian, I find it super interesting to learn the details about particular areas or something yeah. like that. It's less about like, oh, yeah. I'm finding this entertaining. I'm just like, wow, this is actually just really interesting from like more of a yeah. historical perspective. Yeah, so I guess it's something where because it and I guess maybe that 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 applies in a way that I mean you can't separate the two. You can't separate completely the historian and the fiction reader, can you? So I guess in some cases yeah, you're right. like, oh, I like it because it it kind of scratches my back. It's what it's what I get off on. Whereas right. in fantasy, you, you're like, I I'm not studying dragons, so I don't read books about dragons historically. Right. So I don't really need descriptions of dragons and their mating habits kind of thing you're, you're just happy with yeah yeah no that makes sense I think that's, yeah. I think that's my worry is because in my mind what fantasy is really good at that people have always said is like descriptive writing world building building up these really kind of like complicated non-existent creatures and bringing them to life which is something that I think fantasy lovers seem to really really like about the genre yeah and I'm worried that that is yeah. like the exact Often. thing that I will hate about it is how descriptive yeah. it is um and like if I come across something where it's like a three-page description of what a dragon looks like I will not read it all like I'm just telling you now I won't read it yeah. I'll like skim it and just look for like bits of relevant information I'll be like right I'm done I almost can't make myself read it you know okay so that's the end of the show because all I had from now was like stuff about long descriptions of dragons oh damn okay okay um okay well, maybe thanks. fantasy actually Thank just for isn't for me tuning in <laughs> Fantasy is only <laughs> long descriptions of dragons. Sorry, everyone. It was a great show and I hope you mm -hmm. enjoyed it. But I guess next time we'll come back on why Abby hates something else. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I guess it, you, you, you've you quite liked some kind of classic sci-fi as well, haven't you? Like um, H.G. Wells, who is quite snappy and quick. And I guess maybe mm -hmm. that maps to that, that you're, you're, you're glad that he's like, in 10 pages, I tell a whole section of the story and you learn everything about yes. the Martians or whoever it is. I guess you didn't read War of the Worlds, but you know, you learn everything about the time machine, how it works that's the end of it now we move on to something else so there's no on the love other hand you that. really like very you love long rambling classic novels don't you I love character building so much mm. so I can read you know like Clarissa is what 1800 pages of just basically character development that's what that yeah. is and the plot is really See, if like Clarissa had cool. dragons in it if Clarissa had dragons in it there'd be a massive booktube fandom for it Probably. If if Lovelace Probably. was I think a maybe dragon. Maybe you could rewrite it. If Lovelace it. was a dragon. <laughs> like right. Pride and Prejudices and Zombies, but it's like Clarissa meets a dragon. <laughs> so here's the thing. I don't know what zombies come under, yeah. but there are certain things zombie, that I can, like, I can get behind a zombie. You know? I mean, it's better to be behind than in front of one, I find. Well, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love I, a zombie I think... film. Yeah, I think zombies obviously can be created via fantastical ways or via science fiction ways, can't they? So I guess mm -hmm. maybe they're a mixture of both. Um, and horror is its own kind of subgenre, but it's not it's not one of the big two. Sci-fi fantasy is the big two you think about, but horror does sell a lot. So, yeah, I don't know. So right. what I thought we'd do um, is we will talk. I have got four book ideas and we kind of briefly talked about this before i haven't told you what books they are but i suggested that maybe no. we talk about like you could pick a book to read um and like i put some thought into things that like m you might be interested in or at least you might be intrigued by and what i think we said we'd do is that you would pick one do we want to pick one on i guess do you want to pick one on the show today or yeah let's just do that, do you, that we're, we're, yeah we'll do that and then uh, you will read that. And then when we next record this, this will be, I guess, regular-ish. We'll do this at least a few times and see how it goes. Um, and yeah. do different th different topics in fantasy, I guess. But like, yeah, you'll read it. And then when we come back, we will talk about this book, whatever the book is that you pick. Yeah. Yeah, is yeah, that, that sounds good yeah, to great. me.
Yeah. No, great. Okay, I have like a bit of technology here, which we'll see if it works. Um, <laughs> this is mm -hmm. like the first, first time doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Okay, I have added something. Can will it let me? There we go. Wow, look at that. We've popped out. Can you see that? Um, I can see it. Yeah. I can, can and I feel like maybe this yes. is on. I feel like was this on my. Because I have a, a TBR list of recommendations for yeah. people in my comment section, and I really like recognize mm -hmm. this, so I don't know if that's yeah. on there or something. Yeah, it could very possibly. Well be. So, this is so yeah, we've got four. The first one is that I put in a list is Dragonfly. This is my spare copy of it. In fact, I have like an omnibus copy now, and um, because yeah, I some people really hate it. I like omnibuses, I feel like they're more efficient. Mm -hmm. but they are bigger like well so this is dragonfly and mccaffrey i will read you the blurb Go the on. men who rode the dragons it's a dragon book were a breed apart chosen when the dragons were first hatched they became soulmates for life with the huge magnificent beasts they controlled the green blue brown and bronzes beautiful terrible the only creatures who could defend the planet pern from the blood red star but without the queen the dragons would become extinct only the gigantic Golden Queen could breed the new flights. And the Queen was fading, dying, leaving behind one last huge golden egg. So the, this is a dragon book, but look, this is the twist. This is why I've started. It's not fantasy. <laughs> it's history. It's historical fiction. This really happened at a time past in human history. Mm. Okay, no, you've okay. intrigued it's, it's, me there. It's, it's, it's sci-fi. I'm joking. I'm, I'm not joking. It's okay. not fantasy. It, you're now you're really disappointed now aren't you this, now this I'm really, really confused happen. also about yeah. history yeah I, I, I thought history like, didn't you know, involve you were dragons, a reliable like, source yeah. well, I was yeah. thinking like wait are you talking about like dinosaurs like yeah what? men <laughs> rode dinosaurs to destroy the the kind of evil was, filaments of the blood red star in my head I was thinking like I feel like there was a bit of a gap in between when you know the dinosaurs died out and people came around i feel like maybe there was a slight mm, have you seen the flintstones there. the flintstones does not mm, represent, that's true. suggest that so this is sci-fi technically it is so if you like it is fantasy skin sci-fi and i think that's really interesting like the idea that you have fantastical tropes there's dragons uh, there are people who bond with them and they ride around and they do stuff in this medieval world but mm. there's obviously something weird going on because they don't live on earth um they live on a, another planet, but there is obviously science behind what they're doing. And there is this star where basically there's a, a kind of biological uh, thing that comes out of the sky, more or less, on uh, every so often. And that's what the Blood Red Star does. The fall is something where, a uh, thread fall is something where biological stuff comes down and um, the dragons are the only thing that can destroy it. Otherwise it ruins everything. It burns, it destroys, it makes it infertile. Uh, this also, this may interest you, it has, I'm not gonna tell you any more than this, but a weird romance. Yeah. Okay. That's intrigued me. Oh, it's not like a dragon and a person, is it? It's complicated. Okay, it's complicated. Okay. Um... So it's sci-fi, and you like sci-fi. Abby likes sci-fi. And yes, it's got a now weird romance in it, and Abby likes weird romance. I do like weird romance. Um, I'm not like really like, oh no, but I'm just so like, there just seems to be so much dragon stuff. <laughs> so much dragon. Kind of like. But it's I feel like, like this is dragons. a way to, like, this is, it's immersion therapy, like immersion into dragons. Yes. Uh, you know, I've like read Goblet of Fire, so I've definitely read. That has dragons in it, yeah. That has dragons in, but they don't play a huge role in the story. Mm, I feel like I don't know how I feel about this right now. That's. Okay, well, we've got I three other choices. We don't, we, you're not making a decision now, but like. We're gathering your initial response. I think there's just like, there's so many dragons like on the cover as well. There's just like a lot of, and it's called like Dragon Flight, the first dragon riders. So it's just like a lot of dragons. You occasionally get books. I think, I swear I heard, I don't know, someone can tell me about this in the um, in the comments, uh, but like there is some recent dragon series where I feel like the first book doesn't have many dragons in it. And it's called, it's not called Dragons, but it's called like A Reign of Fire, maybe it's something like that. And, and mm. it's like, oh, it's a dragon book and there's basically no dragons in it because it's something that gets set up. Uh, but yeah, oh, no, I can see perfect. there are like, yeah, there are two dragons in the foreground and maybe like 10 dragons in the background. That's a high a dragon question. Dragons. Okay, yes. we'll, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll look at the next thing and we'll decide okay. what, whether, is you know, we'll come back to elves? Yeah. I feel like that, no? No, no, well, it is elves. Oh, is it? 
Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. This is um, by British author Susanna Clarke. It is, it's kind of, it's literary fantasy. So it is, um, I, I wouldn't say it's pretentious or like heavy. Um, I'd say it's kind of literary in the sense it aims at that, that market. And it is about the last magician in England and the guy who starts being a magician in England in 1806. So during the Napoleonic Wars, um, you've got the last magician left in Georgian England, Mr. Norell, and then you have Jonathan Strange who ends up, you know, and they're very different. They're contrasts in character and personality. They have different motives. They've kind of learnt their magic of power slightly differently. And so that, that's something I think is an interesting dynamic. But I, I also thought you'd like the fact that it is positioned as a rambling long 18th century novel. That does really pull me in. Mm. I'm going to be honest. As soon as you were like 1806, I was like, okay. Um, yeah. I feel like I can kind of get down so, with that. Yeah, that actually sounds interesting. And also, like, I don't the the concept of magic in itself yeah. isn't a massive like turn off yeah. for me. There, it's just like I think that's how dragons. that's presented. That's one thing that there aren't dragons. Right. Um, and the weird romance I, potion. Yeah. So that's a good thing. There's no dragons. Right. And I feel like often like there's there's a lot of room to go in some quite like deep and sometimes dark themes with magic. And it so. and with a traditional conception of fairy as well. Um it's over a thousand pages, you'll be glad to hear. So lovely. There'll be a lot of space for you to, to sink into. Yeah. I definitely do kind of short read, long read alongside each other usually, um, because otherwise yeah, you go crazy. I, yeah. And yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah you that's feel good. like you're getting nowhere, yeah. So there is there is romance elements. I'd say the weird the weird romance element is much lesser than in I would say than in Dragonflight. So bear that it's in like mind. Regular, just like regular, just like just like regular romance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cross. Mm, no. Yeah. Oh, they just end up happy together. Great. <laughs> yeah, it's a really lovely story of normal people falling in love. And it's it's interesting. There are romantic elements. It's not a romance. I'd say at least it's not a, a book okay. where a romantic arc is a big thing. But it does include romance. Okay, well, we'll look okay. at the next book. We'll let's look at what the next book is. Okay, Terry Pratchett, Guards, Guards. Uh, mm -hmm. You can see my copy. Uh, that is, have I just got the wrong cover there? I've just got the wrong cover. No, it's the right cover, Guards, Guards. Um, yeah, it has a, it has a dragon in it. Uh, the blurb, mm -hmm. this is where, I, I should read Norell and Strange, actually, shouldn't I? Let's, for the audience's sake, read Norell and Strange. Yes. The year is 1806. England is beleaguered by the long war with Napoleon and centuries have passed since practical magicians faded into the nation's past. But scholars of this glorious history discover that one remains. So there are like scholars of magic who don't do magic. The reclusive Mr. Norell, whose displays of magic send a thrill through the country. Proceeding to London, he raises a beautiful woman from the dead and summons an army of ghostly ships to terrify the French. Yet the cautious, fussy Norell is challenged by the emergence of another magician, the brilliant novice Jonathan Strange. Young, handsome and daring, Strange is the very antithesis of Norell. So begins a dangerous battle between these two men, which overwhelms that between England and France and their own obsessions and secret dabblings with the dark arts are going to cause more trouble than they can imagine. Okay. So yeah, that was strange in the right. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So this is a Terry Pratchett book. It is not the first Discord book. It is the first in the Guards subseries. It's a classic place to start if you want to read Discord. Discord is, mm -hmm. it is comedy fantasy. I've got a review of this up actually, but I wouldn't, it is incredibly reductive to see it as like funny as a funny book and um, like mm -hmm. I think he's a terribly serious writer and we've obviously talked haven't we about the way in which a light or breezy style or, or subject seeming subject matter can be used to communicate quite serious themes and so right. uh, yeah ter Terry Pratchett is is very much in that but yeah there is a dragon in it this is how the blurb goes this is where the dragons went they lie not dead not asleep but dormant and although the space they occupy isn't like normal space, nevertheless, they are packed in tightly. They could put you in mind of a can of sardines, if you thought sardines were huge and scaly. And presumably, somewhere, there's a key. So this is about the, the city watch of Ankhmore Pork is like a decrepit shell, because crime is legalised but managed by criminal guilds. And so the, we don't really need the police except for the most minor of things. Because uh, the guild, if there's someone who's unauthorised, you know, doing unauthorized theft, the Thieves Guild will go and deal with that person. Um, so the watch isn't really that necessary on the whole. And there's only four members left, I guess, uh, or three um, at the start, and then a fourth joins. Uh, they're, they're, um, and the captain of the Night Watch, Sam Vimes, he's a drunk, 
Uh, he is depressed. It's kind of noirish. He's kind of washed up noir detective. Uh, but then this case of what's happening with what seems to be a dragon kind of gets him out of his funk and he goes back into the uh, old ways of investigating crimes. Um, and yeah, it's one of my favourite novels. Uh, I think you'd find it very funny. Um, there is a romance. It's not a weird romance. There are dragons, um, multiple dragons, but it's complicated. Dragons here are not what they are in Goblet of Fire necessarily. So Interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, I think... I've always wanted to read Terry Pratchett just because I've yeah. kind of heard what a great writer he is and also a funny writer. And I do yes. like a good, I do like a good funny book, um, particularly when the humour is a little bit like absurd or bizarre. And I feel like yeah, that might much. be his thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm interested. I'm interested. It wouldn't typically the elements wouldn't be things that I, I would want to read but just like I think the reputation of the author and you saying that it's like really your favorite book you know then I think you know, yeah it makes me intrigued enough yeah yeah I, I yeah good uh, I'm glad that is intriguing to you okay our last book no dragons it is I'm going to get the right side <laughs> mythigo wood by Robert Holstock which you have heard of uh, we have talked about a really lovely cover on this edition, which is the current Fantasy Masterworks cover. It won the World Fantasy Award in like 1987 or something, uh, 1985 okay. maybe. So Robert Holdstock, English author, recommended uh, this edition is introduced by Neil Gaiman. Um, it's, let's just read, it's very hard to describe. I find it like when I talk about this series, I'm like, it's, yeah, how can I describe something that's very, very strange? Um, we're talking mm -hmm. about, yeah, strange humour, strange, strange fiction. So this is the blurb. Deep within the wildwood lies a place of myth and mystery from which few return, and of those few, none remain unchanged. Stephen Huxley has already lost his father to the mysteries of Riot Wood. On his return from the Second World War, he finds his brother Christopher is also enthralled to the mysterious wildwood, wherein lies a realm where mythic archetypes grow flesh and blood, where love and beauty haunt your dreams, and in promises of freedom, lies the sanctuary of insanity. So in terms of oh, okay. weird, weird stuff and weird romance and kind of not surrealism per se, but kind of dark themes, this is definitely up there. No dragons, mm. um, magical trees uh, that basically the, the core idea is that um, deep oak woods, like ancient oak, uh, woodland retains like human mythic memory essentially. And so there's this weird effect that when you're in ancient woodland, uh, time seems to dilate and you seem to suddenly be able to travel enormous distances without in, in like a, a five mile wood or something. And mm. weird stuff starts happening. Uh, but it's not it is not a kind of like, oh, that is not a cute idea. This is like worrying and 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 uh, disturbing and enlivening. Is it very it's very beautiful. It's not, I wouldn't say it's insanely descriptive, but he does have really kind of hypnotic prose. Okay. I feel like you've sold it better than the blurb did. Yeah. The blurb was like nice, but it was just, it felt like a lot of like, like fantasy kind of buzz yeah. words for me, which didn't really massively pull me in. But when you've described it, I, I do quite like books that are a little bit dark. I really like a gothic book, actually. Yeah. I really, really like gothic stuff. Um, There's, and there, I are kind gothic, of there are really gothic notes to it. There are gothic notes to it, mm. definitely. Like, it is not, it is very different from, um, say, Wuthering Heights or the Castle of Otranto. Absolutely very different. Mm. But there is a, a continuity in terms of the idea of lowering presence and psychological breakdown. Okay. I enjoy a bit of psychological breakdown. So, yeah, yeah I feel like this, so, this yeah, one... yeah, weird romance, um, psychological breakdown. Definitely, I I wouldn't ordinarily look twice at it, I think, if I was in a bookshop. I mean, the cover's nice, but I don't yeah. think... I would think, like, oh, okay, that's about tree people, so I'm probably not going to read that. But um, the way that you've described it has made it sound much more interesting than all that, so... Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm definitely so intrigued. We, those are my four candidates. Uh, I feel okay. like we should, like, maybe I can I can flick through them. I can pick up the physical copies. I feel like maybe we should. Uh, I, let's. I'll, I'll just go to physical copies. I'll switch back to. I'll side by side. 
Okay. Yeah, there we go. So there we are. That is the four candidates. And I don't know how we're going to do this. How, how do you want to, do you want to maybe rank them? Think about like, oh, hopefully they all sound idea. like interesting books, but maybe should we have a bit of a, an elimination to, uh, tournament all round for them? To yeah, you know, I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm just no. going to go off like my instinct because actually all of yeah. them, like all of the ones that you've chosen, I feel like you could convince me to read. Do you know what I mean? Like they sound interesting enough yeah. that I would probably want to read them. So I'll just kind of go yeah. off which one's pulling me a little so, bit more. And, like, yeah, and possibly like for the reasons you like or just like saying, are you going to give us like a, maybe a one sentence summary of I want this one or I don't want this one because of this, maybe? Um, I can try if you would like me to do that. I can try and do that. So okay. do you want me to go from number four? Do you want me to start off with number yeah, four? Yeah, let's, let's start with number four. What is the fourth most interesting? Let's put it positively. I mean, put the dragon one because there was just like There are two dragon ones. Of... Do you mean the, the dragon, dragon flight. flight? Yes. Too many dragons. <laughs> just It just sounds a bit too dragony for somebody who I think is a bit like with a Dune, where actually I think Dune was a really good like break into sci-fi yeah. for me because it is sci-fi but it's not like so overwhelming that first yeah. book that you, it's like unrecognizable to me yeah so I, know I think it's, it's maybe kind of, I it's ideas heavy toe. but it's also character heavy isn't it June is quite character heavy right. as well isn't it yeah which yeah. is something that I'm really big yeah. in not maybe that book would be something that I would really like but mm. just for me the the dragon element I feel like might be a bit much Are we like Building you up to dragons. We're going to start with like something else. You just and wait. We'll eventually next get... year. Yeah. I'm going to be writing you're, you're, books you're, for dragons in next year. That's yeah, your I'm entire chain. <laughs> Weird romances of dragons. You're, they'll call you the next Anne McCaffrey. Uh, Abby does also mm -hmm. write books, uh, which are which are good. I um, do. You do. Thank you. I think so. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no one else. Uh, but yeah. So we'll, we'll leave the heavy yeah. dragon <laughs> book for now. That's fine. Yeah. What is the third Come most on. interesting of these books then? Okay, this one's actually quite hard because then the two that I'm going to put in like second and third, I feel like I'm almost like equally interested in. However, yeah. for the sake that it just seems a lot more like fantasy and mythical, I'm going to mm. go for the Terry Pratchett in third, just because there's like God's trolls God's. kind of thing and dragons yeah. and lots of things, lots of non-human creatures. Yeah. So I think yeah, I might struggle with that more. In some ways, yeah. But it's like, interesting. interesting it? And also I would like, to, I really yeah. do keep on, I'm going to read Terry Pratchett, so. Yeah. I so, I mean, yeah, there's kind of dipping the toe in thing here, isn't there? That you're like, you want something which doesn't immediately rip apart your uh, your fragile sense of reality right i have watched good omens i think is it called yeah is that did what we called? talk about that i think you mentioned yeah, yeah the um yeah. Ratchet, neil gaiman co-authored book which there is an ongoing series of yeah so i've there? watched that. i have watched like maybe watched some of the that. first episode yeah no yeah and um, i really liked I that say, and i actually found it really funny and clever so yeah yeah no oh well good uh we'll 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 maybe table we can always bring back for another book section we can always bring back a terry pratchett book another time couldn't we um yes. for the next time Keep we, we pick mind. something so book number two second most interesting mm, i think it's gonna have to be the tree people mm -hmm. i don't know what that it's one's not called it, but the one... it's not called the tree people <laughs> mm, i feel like in my <laughs> head that's what it's called so you refuse to learn the names of actual books, don't you? You're like, you know, I'm, it, I you, people have. are going to find out Samuel Richardson didn't even write a book called Clarissa. It's something completely different. You're like, oh, it's just Clarissa. People are going to be so misled. Clarissa's mis in it, so he's called it Clarissa. Yeah, so yeah. the tree people. I am sufficiently intrigued <laughs> you, you by think that of June book. As like, you think of June as, <laughs> as like, Leo the second. The children of June is, mm -hmm. we'll, maybe we'll talk about that another day. Uh, but yeah, don't get what us phrase, June, What yeah. phrase comes to mind when you think about children of June? I shall not say. That's what I'm going to yeah. say. Wait till I bring out my video on children of June and then you can all yeah. see, plugging myself here, you can all see what yeah. I say about it. Feel free. Yeah, your favourite phrases and moments in the book. Uh, mm. You did like it though, so we'll find we'll hear the good I stuff. I did like too. it. So yeah, Mythigo Wood was number two on the list, and uh, yeah, why? So why not tree people for the first book? First big fancy book you're going to read as a grown up. 
I think it's less that um, there's something that's really like off-putting about it. I think it's just like the other book for me just seems so much more like something that I would, even if you weren't like, oh, hey, let's do this fantasy, yeah. like reading challenge thing. If you were just like, oh, I think you'd like that book, I probably would agree with you because it sounds like things that I would just like mm. in general. So, so I think it's less that the tree people <laughs> is like not my yeah. thing. And it's more that like the Jonathan Strange moment is more me. So is the book called The Jonathan Strange Moment? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. Jonathan Strange. You, it is the closest you've got, given you went for, the, I guess it's, you, you kind of got half of Dragon <laughs> Flight, but like you went for The Dragon and then you went for Terry Pratchett and then you went for Tree People. So The Jonathan Strange Moment, the upcoming novel from Susanna Clark. Oh. So yeah, uh, I think you'll like this. Um, we will, yeah, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll work out what you think about it once you've read it. Uh, it even has volumes. It has three volumes. I feel like that will make you even happier. Yes, I, I really, really love a volume. I'm sorry, I don't know why it took so long for that to sink in that I was just like, what are you on about? Yes, I do love books with volumes. I do. <laughs> what, what no one realises that is that you have no interest in books and there's like a, 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 a tele-auto tele cue being fed to you by someone yeah. else who's like, and then you're taking yeah, a moment to catch up. I've never read a book. Yeah, <laughs> your channel is basically you reading scripts written by people who have read Dune and just like manipulating actually, the algorithm. Um, with this kind of like, oh, I've never read sci-fi. What do you think? <laughs> it's actually worse than that. I'm just an AI bot. Um, so that's why it takes <laughs> oh, yeah. some time. Do you, for me do you to ever respond. see any of those videos where like they're like, oh yeah, we program like it's really terrifying, isn't it? They're like, oh yeah, we're we're programming this bot to like fall in love with someone, and you're like, I don't feel like this mm -hmm. is the place we want to go as a civilization. Yeah, I saw the one where a guy like had a conversation with an AI and yeah. it was very weird. Yeah, which is like yeah. what's happening right now. Obviously, like as an yeah. AI, yeah. I have different feelings about it than you do. So that's fine. Well, feelings, do you have feelings? Mm. I can't reveal that. So. Yeah. <laughs> there are some good, like, we should, when we talk sci-fi, we should talk like good, scary AI books, like books about the day. I mean, like, obviously, Frank, Frank Butler, duh, Frank Butler, Frank Herbert does talk about it because the AIs are all just the Butlerian mm. jihad. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll have to talk about that sometime too. But no, great. So you are going to read Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. And at some point yes. in a future episode, um, and, and I guess we'll try to do it fairly soon, um, or we'll do something else mm -hmm. in between now and then, I guess. But we will yeah, yeah. talk about what you thought about it. Um, and yes. Yeah, and you will also probably do some discussion about this on your channel too, won't you? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try and do update. I Sometimes if I'm reading a really long book or a book that I'm kind of just getting into and trying to learn, like I did with June, I might split it up into different videos, more of like a progress update situation. Yeah, so I could yeah. Do that. you did that for June and you did that for Clarissa, didn't you? Where you kind of were like, mm -hmm. I've read a third and this is what I thought. No, great. Okay, so yeah. yeah, people should follow along there if they are interested in knowing what um, yes. a, 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 fa a fantasy, well, well, you're calling yourself a clueless sci-fi phobe. So we're going for like, I don't know, moronic fantasy phobe. What do you want to, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's yeah, the brand title? Perfect. That's fine. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, a moron yeah. reacts or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> You can make it like an entire <laughs> career out of this, just like to everything, I to really sushi, <laughs> to like mm -hmm. how things are made. You go to a factory. It's like and the see how an idiot looks. abroad thing or something. Yeah, yeah, I. So I, I confess, I, I literally considered saying we could sell you as the Carl Pilkington of fantasy, but I thought mm. I, I was like, well, oh, like, that feels like it. Yeah. Yeah, we could, we could fix that. You could. Yes. You're talking about shaving I could early. Raise money for charity. Yes, my head. By yeah. the way, not feel like we're misleading the audience I'm, here about our previous conversations. I, I didn't think so. <laughs> Just in okay, case there was leave, any misinterpretation. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to leave it there um, and mm -hmm. we're going to get Abby the help she needs between now and, and next time. Uh, Please do. Um, so yes, great. Uh, tell, uh, tell us what you would have picked in the comments. Tell us how angry you are about the choices that have been made today and uh, why our opinions about these things are wrong and also say what you thought about the books whether you liked them disliked them and what other what else would you give to someone just getting into fantasy to read that seems like a good question to hear back from you on because i'm happy to take some of those ideas into our next um choice video so yeah abby say bye bye <laughs> goodbye she's waiting for the <laughs> auto cue to kind of tell her what to say and goyes. goodbye from me till next time